let's get into some shape. Hi, folks. Welcome to Apocalyptic. I am Rick. I'm here with you. We're both in the same place together. How often does that happen? Rarely, I got to say, but I'm kind of, uh, I, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. You know, I know, I knew at the beginning uh, that I wasn't going to be able to do two shows this week. I, I I can't really go into it. I'll have to talk about it later. There's some stuff that sort of happening that uh, I'm just working on. Nothing big, nothing uh earth shattering, but it's taking a lot of time. And uh, I knew I was only going to be able to work in one show. I'm going to try next week to get both shows in, but um, I had to decide. And uh, so I opted for Thursday show today because it's my birthday. That's right. It's a birthday show today, Thursday. Don't always get to do a show on my birthday. In fact, Apocalyptic, this is the first birthday that I've had. Well, I've had the podcast. Um, and uh, let me just say, let me just go through all of my disorders right now. First of all, I'm suffering from uh, allergies in the worst way. If I start coughing or sniffling, please forgive me. But that's something I, you know, I can't really control. The thing that I can control. Uh, so my wife is out of town this week. She didn't, she, didn't, she didn't even get to be with me on my birthday. What? What's that about? That's when you know you've been married too long when you don't get to spend time on your birthday. It's just like, oh, you're on your own. Anyway, no, she had something important. She's um, she's on a, 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 a thing. So she's, she's gone for a week. I'm a bachelor for a week. and uh, But she called me. She said, can I uh, order you some dinner for your birthday? That's pretty cool. And um, so I said, yeah, I'd like, how about a wood-fired pizza? And she was like, okay. So she ordered that. And uh, a piece of cake. Or a little pot. Well, no, it's cake. It was cake. Uh, tiramisu, actually, I believe. What is... Is tiramisu a cake or a pie? Or a pudding, maybe. It's kind of a cheesecake, weird, cheesy, cakey, pie kind of pudding. I don't know. I've never really questioned that. Someone should get into it. Let's say it's a cake. But I had, I had some of that. And so uh, I'm totally, uh, I got indigestion. <sighs> Just keep belching the pizza. I sh you know, um, at my age, I should never eat an entire pizza myself, but I did. And I was uh, thinking, well, I'm going to put some of this up for lunch tomorrow. And um, I didn't. I ate it all. I ate the whole thing. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Remember that? No, you're not that old. Um, but I'm, old. I've decided it's too, now is the time to just stop trying to be young. There's no reason for it anymore. So I, I've, you know, for a, for a year or two, maybe longer, I, I put this, um, uh, color beard wash in my beard, not cause I'm trying to be anything else than I am. Not that I'm trying to pretend like I'm a young man. No one would believe that even with a, a dark beard they wouldn't believe it it's just that i kind of like the way it looks and so i used to dye it and dyeing it doesn't work but the beard wash works this is just a hint for you for you guys are kind of going gray and you don't like it um just for men beard wash not the beard dye the beard wash definitely worth it very natural looking it's very gradual when you put it in i don't know that people could tell it didn't have that kind of uh, dyed look where you look like a, a Satan, you know? Uh, this one was, this is good. So I did it for years, off and on. Sometimes I will start letting the gray come back. And uh, I don't know what it was. I just kind of recently just said, all right, I'm tired of doing that. I'm not going to do it anymore. And let the white, let the, it's kind of white now. It's gray, but it's, uh, parts of it's just white. And so I just let it come in. Just let the whole thing go. I know a lot of women who are letting their gray hair come in. Just they're just like no more dye. So I'm kind of like that, except I don't, <laughs> I don't have the gray hair on the top. 
It's just the beard, and um, I'm letting it in. I'm I'm just I'm gonna be. I'm, it looks good. It's kind of cool. I like it. I'll get bored with it, and I'll probably do the beard wash again at some point. But for now, I'm going with this. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, but I just it's a waste of time to try to pretend like I'm young. Why? There was a t there was a time you can kind of like straddle the fence, you know. You sort of, and then I think there's a time when you kind of fool yourself. That you think no one thinks, you think someone, you know, that people are looking at you. Go, oh, I can't tell. Is that guy young or old? I, I'm not sure. No, no one does that. They haven't with me for a long time. So I just, who cares? Just gonna let it go. I don't care. I'm just gonna be an old artist. I think that there's a lot of people that just kind of uh, dismiss you if you're um, uh, past a certain age. But who? What am I supposed to do about that? I can't help it. I'm not going to fake it for dumb people. You know, I got things to say. I got things to do. I got a podcast to do. I'm an artist. I got things I could talk about. I got things I could contribute in society. I'm still a virile dude. I still have sex with my wife. <laughs> Even though she tells me to stop. Oh, man. You know, I was thinking about that. So when you start getting, <laughs> it was on my birthday, when you start getting old, you start just kind of going back and reminiscing and thinking about certain things that happened. And um, so this is um, 40 years ago, this birthday, I was legal drinking age. You do the math. I'll let you do the math. 40 freaking years. God. I got ice water tonight, by the way. No, no coffee. But I was thinking about the uh, legal drinking age. You remember? You remember when it was cool? When you just couldn't wait to drink, and you, you know, no one waits until they're twenty-one. You still drank some before, right? Sneak it. And I remember. I think my first drinks were beers, and um, I first time I had a beer because I loved the way beer smelled. And so I just thought it was going to smell really good. and uh, But I didn't like it when I tasted it. It was like, oh, God, this is bitter. It's bitter. It's like my ex-wife. So, um, but I got used to it. And I, I got to where I really like beer. In fact, I kind of, I would say I like beer uh, more than liquor for most of my life. I, as I've gotten older, maybe the past five years, I might like liquor more than beer. Uh, gin and scotch, I love both of those. Can have them all the time. I gotta have gin every night. I don't need to. Not I'm not, but I could. Uh, Buffalo Trace whiskey, that's good. I could drink that a lot. And uh, I had some vodka. I had a vodka drink uh, the other day at uh, an art show I went to. It was like lemonade and vodka. And I'm not a vodka person. But that was dang good, man. I liked it. In fact, I I felt good after having that. But for years, it was just beer. I would only have the beer. Um. So that was my first drink. I think it was in high school. And I had some of it. And well, I wasn't that impressed. Nope. And uh, I can't remember how it went to where I just... Well, it was before I was 21, I'm sure, when I was at college. And I went to a Southern Baptist college, and it was against a law to drink. Against the, the, the college law to drink. I don't care how old you were. Uh, but I did go to some parties, some theater parties. I was a theater major. You know theater people. Yeah, we're doing the Coke. I never did Coke. Uh, co rum, we, rum and Coke. Yeah, I didn't do that either. Uh, I just did beer. So the first time I got drunk was a theater party. Oh, man, that was a great party. Maybe the best party uh, ever um, in college. It was cool. It was awesome. A couple of women I was trying to impress. You never can impress women when you're drinking. Never. You think you are, but you can't unless they're drinking too. Then you might impress them. But a drunk guy is never going to impress a sober woman. Just not going to happen. And so... Uh, I think they were kind of making fun of me. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize I was getting drunk. I never got drunk before. My friend Danny just, uh, he had been drunk many times and kept trying to get me drunk. 
So every time uh, I would finish off a beer, he would be right there to hand me another one. And I had no idea how drinking worked. I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, but you get to a point, a certain point when you've had enough beer that you want more and more. I didn't know that. You get to a point where you just keep getting thirsty. You want more beer. Doesn't happen anymore. Two beers, that's enough. But when I was 20, in my 20s, a six-pack was a beginning. That was a start. So, um, and I had, I probably had two and a half six packs that night, maybe more. I don't know. I just remember the room was spinning. That had never happened before. I never, I never had the room spins and holy crap, never had the bed spins. That was the worst part. But, um, yeah, uh, I was probably 20 at that point, maybe 19. I didn't get drunk a lot. Um, at that age, I've never really been drunk that much in my life. Sometimes it's fun to get a little tipsy, you know, but you remember those times when it was cool to drink a lot. And, um, now you can just do it whenever you want to. It's not that much fun. I mean, it is fun, but I don't know. It's just whenever you're allowed to do things, the, the magic is gone. And so I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about sex, sex when you're when you're young. That's like all you think about, right? And I was um, I, oh, here's the thing. I mean, I wouldn't say I was a nerd. I was a nerd for sure, but I wasn't like a uh, a geek nerd. All right, does that make sense? I um, I I wasn't like a jock. I wasn't. I I kind of had some popularity in school because in high school anyway because I. I was a cartoonist and people liked my cartoons and um, I was pretty good in band and and uh, I had some pretty cool friends and so um, all of that kind of stuff. I did okay. I was all right. Except with jocks. They all thought I was gay. And t they told me so. That's how I know. I knew I wasn't gay, but they thought I was, or at least they were attracted to me and they thought they might be gay. So therefore I must be gay. I don't know the high school rules, but, um, I was a nerd. I was kind of a nerd. And so I, from when I was really young, I decided I want to be a minister, a preacher, a, uh, I was, I guess I was religious. Yeah. So I was a young Christian boy, Southern Baptist. And, um, yeah, I used to carry a Bible to, to, uh, high school with me everywhere I went. Wasn't that cool? That's going to get you laid. I'm telling you. But I went to a Christian college. <laughs> Not as bad as you would think. It's actually kind of fun. I, I, if I could do it again, I still would. Had some great friends. All my friends were atheists. Um, we were all atheist uh, um, um, uh, theater people. I wasn't an atheist, but they were theater people. I think mostly atheists drinking the beers and um, going to chapel and church because we had to. But um, yeah, and I, I decided I wasn't going to have sex until I got married. That's what you do when you're a young Christian. I don't know why. Do you get points? I can't remember. I guess I thought I was going to get some kind of points by Jesus or in heaven or something for not having sex. Does, was Jesus watching in on me to check to see if I was happy. What is that about? I never really thought about that. But is he, has he got a book? Is he watching me? That's wrong, Jesus. Anyway, I, I uh, so I don't know. I guess I thought I was going to get married pretty quick out of college. And I didn't. I didn't get married uh, quick out of college. And so, but I, I was determined that I'm not going to have sex until I get married. It was a choice. I, look. I had a girlfriend. I was naked in bed with this person and we didn't have sex. That's how strong of a Christian I was. It's true. <laughs> I hope she's not listening to the podcast. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, and then I started dating uh, a girl and I dated this girl um, uh, she was from another country. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to, um, 
I don't want people hunting her down and writing stories about me on the internet. So I'm not going to re reveal any more than that. She was from another country and um, we were dating and um, and I was 23. I was a 23 year old virgin. That's right. I was proud of it too. That we exist. I still say if you, uh, I, I would say hang on as long as you can. Okay. If, if 14 is as long as you can hold on, Okay, whatever. But no, I just say learn to be in control of your own body. Don't don't be in don't let your urges tell you what moves you should do. You tell your own body what you're going to do. And I told my body at 23. So here's what happened. 23 um uh, this was a a month before I turned 24. And, um, so March, March before I turned 24, virgin boy, Southern Baptist preacher, virgin boy, me dating this foreign girl, girl from another country. We went to see platoon, uh, at the theater at the Kingston four theater in Knoxville. That's not even there anymore. If you're from Knoxville, you know where it was. Uh, they used to play Rocky Horror Picture Show there. So I was, I was in, I was, um, yeah, I was there and I was driving my big old, uh, crap of a car, my Bonneville, my Pontiac Bonneville that I bought for $150 from a friend of mine. And, uh, we saw the, uh, movie. I think I had a few beers when I was there. I wasn't drunk, but I was feeling good. And uh, it started raining, so we ran to the car, and I had locked uh, my keys in the car. And um, I, uh, so I, I just broke the window. A hundred and fifty dollar car? Why not? Just break the window. That's what I did. Um, that's cool, actually. That's kind of a Lloyd Dobler kind of thing. I think it is. Do you know who that is, right? Google. Anyway, so I drove home with my girlfriend, and I don't know what it was that night. Uh, feeling randy, feeling a little harney. Um, had some beer, I suppose. Platoon, high energy going on. And I just thought, you know what? I'm not getting married anytime soon, and I'm getting ready to be 24, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. She'd been trying to do it with me for a long time, and I was sitting no. So I said, I'm going to do it. And we did. That was how, that was my first sex. I'm remembering now. I'm not trying to be gross. You don't just cover your ears if you don't want to hear this. And it changed my life as sex will do. I remember the next day for like a week, every single thing in the world looked like a penis or a vagina. Everything. You remember that? It's just like some kind of subliminal weird thing when you first have sex. Just like it was, that was all that it was. All the time. And then came the guilt, the Southern Baptist guilt. I was like, oh man, Jesus is not going to let me in heaven anymore. I can't do that anymore. And then I, I would go back and forth, back and forth. Oh, I'm so glad those days are over. Oh, young 20 something sex. So uh, drinking, sex, uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, at my age, I can drink or have sex pretty much any time that I want to, and I would rather go to bed and sleep. Um, if anybody told me that would happen back when I was in my 20s, would have thought they were crazy. But yeah, that's where I am now. So um, I don't know. What's your life like? Are you still, still trying to have the sex? Still trying to get somebody to buy you a beer. Is that what's going on with you? I I kind of think we're all grown up now, right? I believe we are. You know, I had a dream last night. Uh, let's see if you can help me out on this one. I'm pretty good at dream interpretation, uh, but I'm not so sure what's going on with me. So the past maybe year. So let me just say, I'm a little bit estranged from my uh, family, okay? And um, I think that's coming out in dreams. So I have, um, I keep having dreams where I'm at, I'm with my family or I'm at my family or I'm at my parents' house. My dad's not alive, hasn't been alive for a while, but in my dreams, he's alive and, uh, things are happening. 
I'm, a, I'm doing things with my family. And I have those dreams a lot. And I think it's because of that, you know, uh, not being connected with my family and my dreams. I'm somehow, I don't know if this is that an age thing. Is it just because I'm getting older? I don't know. So last night, and I've had a dream very similar to this before, but last night, here's what happened. So I go, I, I find myself at my parents' house. I don't know. I can't remember how I got there, why I'm there, but uh, I'm at my parents' house. They're not there. No one's there. I'm the only one there. I let myself in and, um, um, but and no one's, it's just, it's empty. So I just, I'm like, I'm going to go take an, I'm going to go to sleep. By the way, it's the first place I ever had sex to in my parents' house. That's where this, all that took place, my parents' house. <laughs> Is it connected? It could be. Maybe. Didn't think about that. Anyway, completely dark. Now, my parents live in, uh, they're pretty rural East Tennessee. And um, so there's not a lot of lights. It's, it's not a city. Kind of, uh, I wouldn't say farmland. My, we had sort of a mini farm growing up, but it's quiet and uh, very dark out there. You can see the stars. Not a lot of street lights. Not a lot of traffic. So it's really dark. There's not a light on in the house. It's almost like there's a power failure. But all the lights are off. Pitch black. I'm in the house. Going to sleep. And I hear a motorcycle. And then I start seeing lights. You know, like the headlights of a motorcycle. And uh, it just keeps getting louder and louder. And, it, and I, I keep hearing it like, uh, like circling the house. And, and I look and there's someone on a motorcycle, in fact, circling the house. So they're like looking around the house. They're looking for something or someone. Now I think about this kind of scary, complete. And I'm in the house by myself, lights off in the middle of a rural area where I'm not supposed to be in the house, or at least no one knows I'm in the house, and it's dark, and I don't know who this person is on the motorcycle. And they're driving around the house looking for somebody or someone or something, and the lights keep going. You just see them coming in the window, you know? And I can tell that the person is looking in the window at times, and I'm trying to hide. I'm like uh, crawling around on the floor, and it's getting scary. They're going at every entrance, every door, every window in the house looking they keep driving around, and every once in a while, they're in a place where I know they can't see me, and I look outside, and I could see they're looking around for something, like some some dude, mustache dude, you know, almost like a handlebar mustache, probably got forearms, too, I bet. People in the rural areas have forearms. I never had them, but I always wanted them. Never had a handlebar mustache, either, but this guy's got it all, including a motorcycle, and he's driving around. He's looking around, trying to find, and I don't know. I don't know. What do I do? You know, somebody going to come rescue me? Am I going to get killed? Am I going to get, am I going to get uh, attacked, molested by mustache guy with forearms? I don't know. It's not a fantasy. It's not a dream. Not trying to build it up. No, don't want it. So uh, this goes on for a few minutes. And at one point I look up and I see a, um, a sheriff's car in way up in the driveway, he's just sitting there. And I, I'm like, I want to try to get his attention. And her attention is like, this, this person, you need to arrest them. They're not supposed to be here. And um, then I noticed the, the motorcycles up there next to the sheriff person. And I think they got him. I think they took him away. I'm, uh, I, don't, I almost remember in the dream where I ran up and or, or I somehow told them that um, they need to get that guy. Maybe I called. I don't remember. But anyway, they got him. They took him away. That was my dream. I don't know what it means. Anybody know? Anybody want to, <laughs> want to take a stab at it? Yeah, all you have to do is call the listener line, 678-348-0008. Tell me what you think it might mean. That is the listener line. Set it up for you. Uh, you could text that line, too. People have been texting. You could text it. It's simple. Just text. I, you, don't, you don't even have to say your name. I won't say your name if you don't want me to. But um, text, tell me what you think it means. You mean I'm secretly gay? Want to be gay? No, I have sex with my wife. I had sex after breaking out a window in a Bonneville. Eh, you haven't done that, have you? Pizza does this to me, by the way. Um, it kind of gets me, a, I don't know. I'm not on alcohol. I haven't had alcohol in a while. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm going to go until I quit. It's my birthday. I can do what I want to do. Uh, but yeah, what do you think of that dream? Huh? Any interpretation you want to try? You can send me an email too, rick at apocalyptic.com. And um, tell me what you think. 
I won't be offended no matter what you think, whatever you say. Um, so here's something. Speaking of young Christian, I, I, I don't know where it was, what I was listening to, but this came up. You know, there's a story in the Bible. Now, if you're not familiar with the Christian Bible, I will, I will tell you this story. Uh, if you are, you know what I'm talking about. There's a story about, um, well, it's usually just called the woman taken in adultery. You remember that? You know that story? In the Bible, um, they call it the woman taken in adultery. So what happens is there's a group of religious people. Is it the Pharisees, Sadducees? Uh, I, th I think it's the Sadducees, but I can't remember. Bunch of uh, uh, pious religious people. And uh, they bring a, a woman taken in adultery. They bring this woman to Jesus and say, you know, Moses' law says we should stone this woman. She was taken in adultery. And what do you say we should do? Trying to trick Jesus. And that's one where Jesus says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And they all walk away. <laughs> they couldn't outsmart Jesus. So here's, I started thinking about that. And first of all, the woman taken in adultery, they took her. She was in she was committing adultery. And they took, how did they know that this woman was committing adultery? I have a feeling that it was one of them she was taking adultery from. She was doing it to one of them, probably. Don't you think? It never says the dude was taken in adultery. They don't bring the dude, they just brought the woman. Because the dude was probably right there. It was probably one of those guys. Which is why Jesus said that and why they all got embarrassed and walked away because it was probably the lead guy, the lead pastor, the lead preacher. Probably. Now, here's what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought about this. This woman, let's just say, I don't, let's imagine for a second, you know, she's, I don't know the definition of adultery. So, I mean, I do, but I, I in, in biblical definition. So, I don't know if that means the person she was doing it with was married and because she was doing it to the person, she committed the adultery. That's the way the laws were back then, I guess. Or if she was married and doing it with someone and, and therefore the adultery, maybe that's why they could stone her. I don't, I don't know all the rules. I'm just going to guess that she was probably married. Taken in adultery. But so... <clears throat> You're taking an adultery, that means you, it's usually not a casual affair, right? Unless you're a prostitute, and that would not be adultery. That's a whole different thing. So adultery means it's probably been something that's been going on, right? So they got a thing going on. Um, She's probably married. He, he might have his thing going on too. I don't know, but she obviously has got a thing for somebody. Don't know who it is, but they're out. And it's got to be in public is somehow because these people found out. But let's just imagine for a second she's with the dude that she's got a thing for. And I don't know. They're starting to get a little randy, a little harney. And she's like, you want, you want me to blow you? Do, do you, uh, shh, do, you want, do you want me to blow you? Right here? No one can see? I have to be really careful because I don't want to change the um, <laughs> the rating on my podcast. But that's probably what happened, right? She's like, come on, we do really quick right here. All right, okay. No one will know. Just a quick little blow thing. All right, that's what it, blow thing. That's why I called that in high school. Anyway, um, yeah, that's probably what happened, right? Just like a quick little, quick, let's do a quick, quick little quickie. You just pull your, pull your robe up. We'll do that. And then she did. And then she got caught. Next thing you know, she's in front of Jesus. The whole embarrassing thing. But that's the thing. This woman just wanted to do a really, 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 really quick little blow thing. I'm just doing blow thing. Let's call it the blow thing. She wanted to do a quick little blow thing. And now it's 2,000 years later. We're still talking about it. Churches are talking about it. It's in books and children's books. The woman taken in adultery is in children's books. This woman just wanted a really quick blow thing. And now she's still being taught. That whole thing is still being talked about 2,000 years later. How embarrassing. It's crazy. 
It's like a Monica Lewinsky. It's like, she, and I'm not saying she should not or she should. I don't know. Whatever. You know, it's the president. She should expect a little something there. Something's going to happen. But she's young. The president's like, come on, come on. Just one quick thing. Nobody's going to know. I think that's what happened. She's young. She's like, sure, I'll trust you, Mr. President. Sure. And now in history books for the rest of her life and beyond, our grandkids, our grandkids, grandkids, and beyond, whenever, it's just like when you hear about Lincoln getting shot, you're going to hear about Bill getting blown. It's going to be forever. Something you thought was quick. The woman taken in adultery just thought it was going to be quick, and now she's a legend. It's a blowjob heard around the world. How embarrassing. I just, I'm so glad that my first experience uh, didn't end up like that. <laughs> Although it might, I'm sure it's talked about from um, ever and ever among certain people. <sighs> All right. This has been a pretty good birthday podcast, don't you think? I think we talked about some great things. I think we got a lot accomplished. Um, hey, uh, let me just let me just say, uh, the podcast usually happens mo every Monday and every Thursday. I this month and last month has been really screwy. This it's going to get a little screwier the next two months. But I'm going to try to. I really am going to try to get back on schedule. I swear, I'm going to try to get back on the schedule. It, it might be some weeks, some weeks I might just be able to get one and I'm going to try to do the Mondays. All right. This one, this week was a little different, a little special because uh, it's a birthday. I wanted to do a birthday thing and uh, for you. And how are you, by the way? Are you OK? Are you doing well? Um, are you having sex? Are you having drinking booze? Are you having a good time? Um, I, You know, that's pretty much if you're going to be if you're going to be remembered for anything. It's, it's got to be that. And when you think about the Bible, as we all, when you think about the characters in the Bible, almost all of them are known for one of two things, for sex or for drinking. Really, it's just Mary Magdalene, sex. She was a prostitute, right? Jesus turned water to wine at a party, as a wedding party. It's, drink, it's either that, it's drinking or sex. So just go party. It doesn't matter if it's your birthday. Have a good time. Jesus says it's fine. All right. I'm going to go find that woman. 